will uh, do it. I yield now to Ranking Member Bonamici. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for the invitation, Ms. Delon. <laughs> Uh, look forward to a visit. Uh, in 2023, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children assisted with more than 28,000 cases of missing children, and approximately 90% of these cases deal with endangered runaways who are highly vulnerable to exploitation and, of course, face a number of risks, including homelessness and child sex trafficking. So this Congress, I'm ple pleased to lead. It's, it's H.R. 6041, it's the Bipartisan Runaway and Homeless Youth Trafficking Prevention Act, which would reauthorize key federal grant programs to provide states with funding and services to help thousands of homeless young people and survivors of sex trafficking. So how critical is it to provide this, this, this at-risk population with services, and in what ways can enhancing training and trauma-informed care at shelters better deliver services for this population, which is connected, of course, to the work that you do at NACMAC. Thank you, Congresswoman, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. Um, you touched on an incredibly important um, aspect of our missing child uh, casework. There are uh, a large number of our children who uh, are running away from, from state care, from foster homes, from group homes. Um, these children are in group homes uh, in the child welfare system because of trauma that they have experienced, whether it be violence, uh, sexual abuse, um, neglect, um, a whole host of reasons why they may be in that situation. And all of our cases that we work, each individual child will have an individualized plan based upon the endangerments facing that child, because no two children are the same. And those are the endangerments that we're going to have to use when we're um, working with law enforcement and, and uh, conducting our um, programs to try to search for that child. Having training and education within um, the, the shelters, within the child welfare community, it's critical. There's, this, is, this is a game sport or a team sport. This is everybody in their respective roles being able to share information so we can better protect these children. We have a, a running list of endangerments that we are um, continually asking as a child is being intaked as um, missing with us. So we can work directly with the child welfare official um, who is uh, you know, case managing right, that right. child. Um, to provide them the details that we have, um, the endangerments they have, and the experience that we see across the, across the uh, continuum with these cases. I will also mention um, about the individualized attention for each missing child. Um, again, every child is different. In the child welfare system, they may have a new placement. They may have a new um, uh, you know, caseworker. They may have a new law enforcement agency. NECMEC does serve as a point of continuity for these children, that if they do go missing, that we have the details on them going back as long as we've known to try to work with the officials to find them, not only to bring them back, but also to give them the necessary services that they need to try to break the cycle. So critical. Thank you so much for that work. I, I, I was surprised at what seemed like a staggering number of, mm -hmm. uh, coming from the child welfare system. So, so I want to mention a recent case from my home state of Oregon. Uh, just last month, uh, a man was sentenced to six years in prison for possessing and distributing thousands of photos and videos depicting uh, child sexual abuse. The investigation actually started in Ohio, but it was successful because they found six individual cyber tip line reports from NECMEC that had traced back to an IP address in his, the perpetrator's Oregon home. So this is a success story and I think shows how your work is so critical. Uh, thank you on behalf of, <laughs> of Oregon. Uh, and, and that cyber tip line really made this um, case, uh, okay. it, 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 it solved the case and it, and it got the perpetrator incarcerated. So can you detail how the cyber tip line works with law enforcement to address these cases? And how can Congress improve this service? Oh, excellent question, and, and you're, just that case example details what we see every day. Um, when we receive cyber tip line reports uh, that indicate that there is a possible child sexual exploitation occurring here in the United States, we work very closely with the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Forces, who are highly trained law enforcement officers in every state of the nation. Not only do they respond to the cases we receive, they also conduct proactive investigations, which it sounds similar to uh, the case that you described, right. and they network with each other. They network for best practices. So in a case uh, that you've described, it's not uncommon for uh, one lead in one state to lead to another uh, state. And if you're thinking about the 36 million reports we received just last year, we have a lot of information that's valuable to law enforcement.
to bolster the cases that they may be working, or in many cases to inform them of something happening in their backyard that they wouldn't have known about otherwise. And I assume you work with all levels, state, local, yes. federal. We work with every law enforcement agency that is uh, actively working to protect children, and federal, many, state, and local. How many, in my final few seconds, how many do you have on your staff? Because it sounds like you do a lot of work. We do a lot of work. We have 460 uh, employees, 24-hour organization, Wonderful. and honestly, the most passionate people you'll and ever I meet. Thank each and every one of them, and thank you for your leadership, and I yield back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, order of question is going to be Owens, then Hayes uh, from the great state of Utah. Representative Owens, you're recognized.